Saint Lord, Must have far and Saint John. Close, not really. The true name is John, only John. So when you lift up your hands, say hallelujah. Come help me on this side. I'm gonna bring this truth unto my people. I'm gonna bring this truth unto my people. I'm gonna spread this news amongst my people. I'm gonna spread this news amongst my people. Oh, yeah. We made the heaven, the sun, and the moon. Now listen clearly while I'm spinning some truth on this tune. We cleaning up, but only with a righteous broom. So let's be ready, cause Yahushua is coming soon. We got it good, cause y'all didn't forget about us. He sent us clues, two letters that he used to write us. Over the years, those letters came. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, little Hebrews. Well, today we have a very important lesson to present to you. So whether you're an itty bitty brew or a big Hebrew, it is very important that you pay close attention to this video. We'll be taking a look at the difference between the Ashkenazi and Sephardi Jews and how the Israelite way is different from both of them little hebrews and we'll be showing you from scripture how neither the ashkenazi nor the sephardi jews are israelites with scripture and evidence of their lineage and origin we will prove that these are not descendants of the ancient israelites but that we are the true inheritance of the israelite heritage so welcome to another hebrew heritage monthly history video lesson the israelite heritage versus the ashkenazi and sephardi jews so who are the people in the land of israel today who are known as the ashkenazi jews well little hebrews if you have not gotten your little pencils and pads and notebooks hurry up run really really quick we're going to give you a couple seconds to grab everything that you need. You're going to need your Bibles, your notes, and all of that good stuff. Because we're going to take you through a story. This is kind of like a story time type deal. A very long time ago, little Hebrews, there was a people known as the Khazars. They were a great empire that made up Eastern Europe's largest and most powerful kingdom. They would greatly rule for about 200 years, ranking in power with the Muslim empire called Caliphate and the Byzantine or Christian empire. So when you hear a Caliphate, um, that's the Muslim empire. And when you hear Byzantine, that's the Christian empire. So anyway, about the year 740 AD, the Khazar king and his court decided they should adopt a religion for their people. So, representatives or people of, from Christianity and Islam, as well as some Israelites, were invited to present their teachings. Now, we know, little Hebrews, that Yah's way is not a religion. But like all European nations of the time, the Khazars were pagan. And like Constantine, founder of Christianity, they decided that they needed to stick to one teaching. The Khazars decided to choose the Israelite way of life because both the Muslim and the Christians agreed with the Hebrew scriptures. And they all agreed that it was the closest to the truth. That's because it is the truth. But the Khazars also wanted to stay independent. And what this means, little Hebrews, is that they wanted to be free which means that they didn't want to be affiliated or in any way connected to one group over another. If they had chosen Islam, then they would have made the Christian world mad. And if they had chosen Christianity, they would have made the Muslim world or Islamic world mad. So they played it safe. They chose to follow Hebrew customs and traditions. But because of their lack of spiritual understanding, they did not follow Yah's laws and commandments, but they eventually created their own version of the law called Judaism. Now, Judaism is a religion of the Jews, but we'll come back to Judaism later. But first, let us take a look at the origin of the Khazars. Now, where did these people called Khazars originate from? We know at this point that they were a great kingdom, at that time and that that they decided as a pagan 
uh, community, just like Constantine, that they wanted to stick to one teaching. But where did they come from, though? What's their nationality? What is the nationality of the Khazars? Well, once upon a time, little Hebrews, there was a Khazar king named Joseph, who was friends with the Spanish Israelite named Hasadi Ibn Shaprut, sometime between 954 and 961 CE. In a letter to Hasadi, uh, King Joseph, which was the Khazar king, said that he was from the line of Japheth, from the seed of Togama, Japheth's grandson. Now remember that this is the Khazar king, little Hebrews, telling the Israelite that he is from the line of Japheth. He also stated that Togomar, who was the brother of Ashkenaz, had ten sons and that the Khazars represented the seventh son. And, according to the king of the Khazars, his people are a descendant from the family of Magad. Now, let's take a look at these names that the Khazar king mentioned that his people are a descendant from because we've seen them before. Japheth. Togomar, Magog, and Askenaz. Haven't we heard these names before? Where have we seen them? Let's turn now to Genesis chapter 10. We are going to read verses 2 through, 2 through 5. And it states, The sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, and Javan, and Tubal, and Meshach, and Tyrus, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Riphat, and Togomar, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dodanim. By these were the owls of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, and their nations. So little Hebrews, from scripture itself, it tells us that Ashkenaz, Magog, and Togomar are descendants of Noah's son Japheth, and that these are the owls of the Gentiles. Genesis chapter 10, little Hebrews, is known as the table of nations, and it gives us the lineage or descendant or families, little Hebrews, of the uh, of Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And it says that Japheth's, uh, Noah's son, Japheth's descendants are known as the Gentiles. Gentile, little Hebrews, means nations. And the Hebrew word for Gentile is Goy or Goyim. Goyim was a generic name that we, the Israelites, applied to the European nations. In fact, Gentile means nation or nations, according to the table of nations, again, in Genesis chapter 10. So, the Khazar king was telling the Spanish Israelite that they are the Europeans, or who we would refer to as the so-called white people today. Today, about 85% of all Jews are Ashkenazim, or Ashkenaz. Remember, the Khazar king mentioned that Ashkenazi is in their lineage, or their family. The Ashkenazim and the Khazars, little Hebrews, are the same people. But why did the Khazars take on the name Ashkenaz? There are two reasons for this. The first reason why the Khazars took on the name Ashkenaz is because they are descendant of Ashkenaz, so they were simply naming themselves according to their nationality. Kind of like we would put Yisrael at the end of our names to reflect our identity that we are descendants of the ancient Israelites. The second reason the Khazars took on the name of Ashkenaz is because it was prophesied in Jeremiah 51:27 that Ashkenaz and their allies would conquer Babylon. Little Hebrews, if you remember, the Israelites are descendant of Noah's son Shem. Shem, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, and the 12 tribes. How can the Ashkenazi Jews be the Israelites, when from scripture and the mouth of their own king, they are of Japheth? 
that's because they are not Israelites. Little Hebrews, descendant of Noah's son Shem, through Abraham, through Isaac, and through Jacob. 